anyways well we'll get started everybody uh let's get to the thank you for all the participants online we have people both in person and online thank you for everybody who showed up today uh to our amazing hey. bank of america hey. yes venue guys parking if those of you who have any questions on parking hey what's up hey come on in so uh coffee you know donuts we have the, we have the goodies here uh thank you again for joining let's get to the next slide we have our, our fearless leader, Ryan McKenzie, who's back from his baby moon. Yay. Yay. We're going to have him come up here and, and, and show his mug because you guys are all tired of me. So, Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for attending our broker forum, CCIM Greater Los Angeles. It's a fantastic opportunity to present your deals, as well as come here in the room and shake some hands and build some relationships. As we're going through an interesting time in the real estate market, it's great to have uh, inside information as we talk about our deals, as well as shake hands with our local brokers. So uh, thank you very much for coming to the meeting. And uh, if you're here in person, we'll chat after. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you, Ryan. As we continue on, we're going to jump on to the next slide. I think our sponsor highlights coming up. First and, first and foremost, for those of you who are are not aware we have our we have our platinum sponsor CoStar Group, and we have several others in our gold in our gold sponsors RPM Commercial, Restores Emergency Service, uh, uh, excuse me, Restores excuse me, Restores excuse me. I'm like I'm like I think I was blocking it. We have also Bank of America, who is here hosting our venue here today. Welcome, welcome, come on in. Uh, and today we also have a, 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 a complete group of silver sponsors. As you can see here, we have several people who are on the board and are, are members who are here to service and support our chapter. We'll continue on with the next slide as we have multiple pages for both our silver and our bronze sponsors. They come, they, they, they're, they're a series of vendors and a series of organizations that can help support your business. And again, we encourage you to, to reach out to them and to give them, you know, a chance with your business. But at the same time, they are excellent resources. They have actually been able to help uh, not only me and my business, but they've also, we've heard from many case studies from different members where they could either serve as, you know, uh, for, first of all, sourcing vendors for any type of issue with real estate, everything real estate. Um, when we're talking about finance, we have plenty, finance, plenty of financing sources. We have tech companies. We have actually online pl listing and comp platforms. So again, our sponsors are a great mix of different vendors that can help support your business. So we appreciate them and all that they do. And again, we have uh, to give you guys a shout out. We had our third annual golf tournament that just happened, I believe last week. You missed the hole in one. Oh, I missed your hole in one. Oh my goodness. We had Ryan McKenzie. <laughs> hey, you know what? Who, who, who was there? Nobody there? Okay, we all believe it. <laughs> we're gonna have to double check this with uh jeff uh jeff gould we're gonna have to confirm sources but we had several notable donations from not only the silver sponsors here who are listed but uh the box lunch sponsors rece reception sponsors and multiple tea sponsors we also had individuals who were part of this this is actually this was uh in partnership uh with crew uh la and also this was in fundraising for uh make a wish okay um for those of you who don't know what Make-A-Wish is, it's an incredible organization that supports uh, a variety, of, again, make, makes a wish for a lot of different uh, children, right? So again, for those of you who want more information about that, we just want to highlight and thank all of our sponsors and our participants that supported this golf tournament as we're, we're, we're ramping up. This is our third one. We want to get more people involved, and all you golfers that are out there, we got to start challenging. We got we to gotta test this hole-in-one theory with uh, Ryan next time. We're going to have to... Really see where it's at. How many how many yards was it? How was? Well, uh, Holton one's just straight in there. Right in there. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter how. Like two two fifty. Two fifty. Oh, man. <laughs> we know. Driver straight in. Driver straight in. There you go. So we thank everybody and thank Ryan and everybody for their participation. So <laughs> continue on to the next slide. So today we're gonna have our sponsor highlight. We have the Trowbridge Law Group. Gene Trowbridge, are you on the line, sir? Go and check, check in, check it in real quick. Anybody from the Trowbridge Law Group? Uh, I think it's not on yet, Frank. Okay, we'll go back to him, but a little vignette uh, with Gene. 
Gene, and this was back in the day when Gene and uh, Jillian were 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 were, 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 were uh, business back in the day. But uh, they did my first syndication, so they are a great law group. Uh, really walked me through the process. All I can tell you is nothing but great things about Gene and and, and him and his his expertise. So again, we'll have his opportunity to come share what he has to offer uh, when he jumps on. But we'll we'll jump into some uh, we'll jump into the next uh, slide so that we can start talking about listings and start going over deals. Because we have a full plate of transactions here for you guys, and we're going to spend a little bit time, a little time to learn more about them and to see how they play in the current marketplace. Before before we go into this, I know we 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 try we endeavor, and again, we'll probably put a slide in this. But do we have anything from Bank of America for any economic stuff for uh, not today? Uh, at the end. Okay. At the end. Okay, at the end. So at the end, we're going to have Bank of America give us a little bit of an economic update. Um, for those of you who are new to the broker forum. What we're endeavoring to do is to add segments that are being requested by our by our members. And what's happened is um, we had a case study back in February when we were all high fiving, thinking inflation was over. And then uh, we had Bank of America come out and they said, "Guys, there's no way." We had a contrarian in the room. Ryan and I were like high five. We're like, "Yes, all of our listings are gonna get sold. It's done. It's over. It's like the Matrix. The war is over, right? You know." <laughs> So we were we were all high fiving, and then we came back, and as you guys well know, our our interest rates are where they're at. So we uh we appreciate the inside insight of the consumer, uh, excuse me, of their investment group, and they have their trust and fiduciary groups here in this office, and they also have economic updates for their for their customers, and they have been generous and gracious with their time to be able to offer that information to our chapter members. So we welcome them, and we want to give that also to you who are here on the line. So uh, we'll get started with some of the listings. Um, excuse me, Francisco. I think Jean is already here. All right, Jean. I just gave you a big shout out. Jean, are you on the line? Yes, David, I am. Hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna let you uh take your take your sponsor highlight and tell us more about who you are, what you do, and how we can uh benefit from your services, sir. Go for it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, I, I am probably known to quite a few of the people that are on the call today. I'm a 40-something a, a year uh, a CCIM instructor. My number is 773. There's always someone with a lower number whenever I come up with that, but I'm still proud of that. And um, yeah. my career in the real estate business has led me to be from being a broker to being a syndicator to uh, going to law school at 45. And ever since then, I have been a securities attorney. And that's what uh, Trowbridge Law Group does, is we work with uh, real estate brokers and investors who want to sponsor uh, groups, put together groups to buy real estate or businesses. We've done quite a few businesses uh, in the last couple of years where you raise money from investors uh, you project that there might very well be a profit and uh, you do all the work. So that's kind of the definition of a security, uh, uh, money from investors into a uh, into an entity with an expectation of profit through the results of a sponsor. So if that's what you think you're going to do, you're going to put together, it could be one person, it could be a hundred people. You're going to put together a group it's going to be a syndication because by definition, two or more people is. But the question is, does it rise to the level of a security? And you better be sure that you know that before you do your deal so that you do it right and you stay out of jail. That's Ooh, me. There we go. That's the <laughs> kick right there. Oh, man. And I'm down here in Orange <laughs> County. You know, I've been down here in Orange County, but I'm happy to, happy to be a silver sponsor of the L.A. Uh, the chapter, if if you ever look back in the annals of the LA chapter, I actually was the first member because we, LA chapter uh, has quite a history, but at one time it broke off from the Orange County chapter and I supported it and uh, was the first dues paying member, so. Man, you got, you got stories to tell us next time. We're gonna have to have you in person in here. Yeah, right, I next, do a lot uh, of stuff. I still, I do, um, I do virtual classes for the institute in the ward center, 
on crowdfunding and syndication. I'd be happy to do a free a free event, maybe a three hour event for uh, for the chapter. It doesn't cost anything for me. I don't know if the chapter wants to charge for it. It'd be fine. Put a little money in the coffers. It'd be fine with me. And uh, happy to oh, do that. Excellent, Gene. Gene, uh, we we you know in this time in the market, I'm sure you're seeing more and more people source opportunities and have people with cash who are looking for these opportunities. I mean, tell us a little more about you know the syndication world. I know there's there's been changes you know with uh, with the Jobs Act and series of things. I mean, is there anything that you can give us kind of a little tidbit to introduce what what people are looking for or the types of syndications that are are more popular nowadays sure. or Sure, I, I can do that. But let me first of all say that this is big business, the private placement business of putting together groups of investors when you don't go to Wall Street and you don't get fully registered with the SEC. In the last 12 months was $2.7 trillion, according to the SEC. And that's twice the amount of money that was raised in um, IPOs on Wall Street. So this is big, big business. Now, real estate's probably only about 20% of that market. Most of it is businesses. I mean, last year, we helped someone buy a hockey team. Uh, we helped someone invent, uh, get a patent for a mixer for pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, a fiber optics company, almond uh, growing. There's a lot of ways. Anytime you need extra capital, no matter what you're doing from a group of people, you, you probably are going into the securities world. So that's that's just a scope of how big the business is. Uh, our volume, and, and if you talk to four or five for people like me that are in the same marketplace today, we're all going to tell you that our volume, just like your volume, is probably down 30 40% over um, 2002, just because there aren't that many um, deals that the syndicators want to buy because the sellers haven't uh, come to grips with what the new pricing is. That's really, that's really the issue. So it's, um, it's still active. It's just not as active as it was in the heyday. Uh, multi, in my world, multifamily is big. Uh, mobile home parks are big. Self-storage is big because I used to, when I was a syndicator, I used to do self-storage. So a lot of people call me to do their legal work just because they know I've been through the through the battles of being a syndicator, the good and bad, and so that's what they uh, uh, they want from me is my type of my type of experience, and I, I guess that's probably a, about it, David. Excellent, sir. Well, well, we appreciate. It. Does anybody have any questions for Gene? Anything about any deals scenarios? This is next syndication class. Uh, when is your next syndication class? Boy, that's a good question. At the present time, we're not doing any live classes. Some of you may know that we used to do one and two day live events. Uh, we're not doing that today. There's there's just no market to, to go to a live class like that without a designation attached to it. There's a plenty of a market to go out to CCIM classes, but not for okay. not for what I do. But the next one would be, and I can't even tell you when it is. I'm sure it's in well, I can too. It's in July, July 23rd and 25th at the Ward Center is our two-day event. It's an hour and a half, uh, hour and a half each each day. It's a Wednesday and a Friday, I think, this time, or a Tuesday and Thursday, whatever it is. But once again, we Perfect. could do that for the, we could just simply do our own for the chapter if you guys wanted to reach out to me, and I'd be happy to accommodate that. Yes, we'll reach out to you and coordinate right now with, with, with CCM Greater LA. We are putting together uh, webinars together, we're putting our schedule, and we would love to have you. And again, cool. we would like to teach all of our, our brokers to, to give you a call to take advantage of some of these opportunities because we're the ones, we're the boots on the ground. So we appreciate your, That's your right. time and your We look forward to you know, doing more business with you, Gene. Thank you. Okay, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be a sponsor. Bye. All right, thank you, Gene. All right, we'll go to the we'll go to the next slide. We'll get started with our listings and see who uh, who wants to buy these in the in, in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so they can all buy. Them. Yeah. <laughs>
We can all raise some cash here. All right, we have some. We have our in person. Greg, would you like? Would you like to be called Gregory? I was Gregory. 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 Greg. Gregory. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Come on in. Appreciate being here. Um, so uh, this was a deal we I had brought on a few weeks ago. It's a mixed use industrial property in East Pasadena. Uh, pretty rare, uh, about a 40,000 square foot industrial building in the back. Uh, in the front is a duplex. Um, we recently reduced the price from 3.2 million to 2.995. Um, uh, owner would entertain an offer at 2.8. Um, he lives on site in one of the units and would like to stay on site. Uh, he's 70 years old. His wife is 73. They kind of have their roots in the building. 2% uh, uh, buy side fee on this. Um, immaculate building. The owner had built it himself with his father about 20 years ago, about 20 to 18 to 20 foot clear heights uh, in the warehouse, about 3,000 square feet of open space with about uh, 2,000 square feet of mezzanine. Um, if you have any questions um, or if you have any clients who are entertainment related, arts related, um, set design, pre or post production, um, even light manufacturing, the owner had used this uh, space for its cabinetry business for 20 years. Um, and because he told the city of Pasadena he was making cabinets in there, they thought that the sawdust as a byproduct was um, combustible. And so they made him over improve the building. The building has four hour firewalls on the exterior, um, separately metered, um, 200 amps of power. Let me know. Okay. Uh, he will carry, he will carry. And his terms uh, can be very flexible. So, um, you know, in, in the OM, we had listed his kind of wish list in terms of his carry, you know, pretty much 800,000 down, basically, you know, 2.1 carry at 6% interest. Um, but he's open to anything. Let me know. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, we'll go to the next slide. All right, Dario. Any colleagues? Hey guys. Yeah, I was just going to say before I before I get going, wanted to welcome Francisco to the office. Glad to have him. He's a great guy to join the uh, the office and the energy that we have going on. So welcome. Thank you, sir. Come on. Uh, uh, first, listing, first listing is a, um, a RTI delivered, 100% affordable ED1 project in Panorama City, 133 units above one level of on-grade parking. Uh, the property's on a corner and also on an alley, so the beauty is you also get some additional open-air parking spots in the back of the building in the step-back. So highly desirable. These, uh, as you guys know, I've sold a bunch of these type of ED1 projects. The difference in this design uh, is that the units are more comfortable. The one bedroom average about 500, the two bedrooms average about 700 square feet. In an area like Panorama City, where units tend to be a little bit bigger, uh, you're going to have a hard time competing with uh, landlords that are willing to take Section 8 tenants or even covenant tenants should uh, by having bigger units and probably at a lower price point. So the owner of this project decided to make the units a little bit bigger. Um, furthermore, the uh, new Van Nuys rail line that's been announced and broken ground is going to have a stop at the intersection of Van Nuys and Woodman, which is a block away from the property. So highly transit oriented, but also has parking, also has uh, some minor amenities like a gym and, uh, and a uh, business room. Great design. We've had actually good activity on this site. Um, so anyway, bring your clients. Let me know. Next slide. So this is a site we have at West Adams. Uh, not a site, a brand new construction. Three double duplexes, all three and four bedroom units, townhouse style. Big lot, 10, just under 10,000 feet. So now your typical uh layouts these units are definitely bigger they have, most of these buildings tend to be designed with really small living rooms this one has a full floor living room so very comfortable um definitely great for roommates great for families it is across a, a block away from the farmdale expo line entry so it is highly transit oriented but it is parked there is about um eight covered parking spots and then two open air parking spots so definitely definitely parked 
should you decide that you don't want that parking, you can convert those garages to ADUs later on, seeing the, that this project was built by right, so no ADUs were, were added to the property. So great location, great potential. Uh, C of O is imminent in the next 30 days, so we are selling it vacant for right now. Uh, we do have some flex on the price, probably a few hundred grand with the right terms. Next slide. So this property and the next slide is 642 and 648 North Hayworth uh, at Melrose and Fairfax area, which is walking distance to the Grove. Um, and nine units and 10 units respectively, 2.85 and 2.6 respectively. Um, as crazy as this is gonna sound, I have eight offers on this property, on these properties. They're both listed at low four caps. Uh, kind of surprised that we have that much activity these in this market, um, but, have eight offers currently, so we should be going into escrow hopefully in the next 24, 48 hours. But things, even though they are low cap rates and subject to the Potential Justice for Renters Act, but people still, the, the offers that we have had have all been all cash, quick close, uh, long term investors. Next slide. This is the adjacent building I mentioned, 648. 642, I mean. Next slide. And then this is the building I have in Beverly Hills. Um, brand new office building on Olympic and Maple. We just lowered the price $2 million. And frankly, I probably still have another $2 million in flex. We, it's great for an owner user, but we have a couple of LOIs to lease the second and third floors uh, in almost $6 a foot triple net. So it is going to likely be leased up with the ground floor retail available still. We do have some LOIs for the ground floor, but we have not engaged those yet as we are trying to get either a high quality restaurant or some kind of you know higher quality type of tenant rather than just your typical sort of community type of tenants. Like we have uh, LOIs for FedEx and whatnot. So not really what we're going for. But again, the two second and third floors will likely be leased. Uh, and with the flex on the price, we probably are going to be selling this somewhere in the mid to high five cap. That's it for me. Excellent. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Dario. Appreciate your time. Does anybody have any questions? Sure. If not, we're going to move on to the next, our next presenter. All right. Kathy Constanzo, welcome. Come on up. We have her in person. Recent oh, yes, Yay. and she recent CCIM designee. Congratulations. <laughs> ah, really hit. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, so really late last night on this particular property, um, it is, we are, I think we are um, uh, not going to be um, marketing because it's, it's going to probably be under contract. So um, I can probably, we can pass on this, however, uh, we are still entertaining offers. We have not gone under contract uh, yet. So anyways, but this is, it, it's, it's a nice um, opportunity for an owner user. Uh, about a third of the building is occupied by a hair salon. Uh, and so there is, um, there is a nice opportunity right on a busy thoroughfare of Fremont in South Pasadena to own your own nice small office and retail building. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this one is very exciting to, to me. Um, our team has listed uh, the old Whittier Trust buildings here in South Pasadena. Uh, South Pasadena, this is the corner of all corners on Huntington Drive and Fair Oaks Avenue. Uh, uh, so the 1600 East Huntington Drive was where the C-level executives um, office it's actually, it's two stories and a basement. The basement has a gym, there's showers, uh, and it's certainly uh, very, uh, it's perfect for a law firm, accounting firms. It's a very prestigious building. You can have incredible sign rights there. Uh, and also of interest, it has enough parking. There's 78 parking spaces, uh, a gated parking here. So you could potentially have medical there with the CUP. And so we definitely have some, uh, some prominent uh, medical uh, organizations that are interested in this location. 
the 1810 building, it's, it's a neighboring building right on the corner as well. And that's really, uh, that was their data center. Uh, that is, so this is the 1600 building. This is the 1810 building. That is actually three stories with a basement. Uh, it has a very nice kitchen in there. Uh, uh, all of the offices, the outer perimeter offices have nice natural lighting. Uh, the, and there's a nice shared open workspace in the middle. <laughs> And so uh, it's an excellent opportunity for really any office user. Um, and there's 28 parking spaces in the back uh, and an excellent opportunity. The owners, uh, Whittier Trust, they just recently moved to 177 uh, East, Col uh, East Colorado Boulevard. Um, they would like, they prefer to sell together, but they would definitely uh, sell separately. Uh, they we're offering a two and a half percent cooperating broker commission. So at ask, that's over three hundred eighty thousand dollars that we would love to give to a cooperating broker. So uh, please let me know if you have any interest or have any questions on this property, and we would get you through at any time uh, between uh, our team members. Um, we're happy to uh, to answer any questions or get you through. There is, there is, and um, and with the ability to add, it has enough power to light up a, a, a little city uh, in in that eighteen ten building. Yeah, it's excellent. So uh, we do have some interested people, but I've not received uh, a proposal yet. So the recent, it's a it's a pretty recent listing. Any questions on it? Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is a very rare opportunity to for someone to own a small office building or retail building. As you all know, it's hard to find these small buildings. Um, this one is, the, the building size itself is 3,752 square feet. Uh, lot size is just over 5,300 square feet right on Colorado Boulevard. So you're basically looking at in between Target and Amazon Fresh. So you know it's right off of the 210 freeway is an excellent location for a retailer, high visibility. Um, it's, it's got a, um, uh, it's, it's really an excellent uh, sign rights and, and visibility for a retailer or even a, a gym or something like that. Uh, so we're offering a 2.5% broker, uh, cooperating broker uh, commission. You can see here how there's parking in the back. It's, it's an inline. And it's just along the, the um, Colorado Boulevard. So any questions on this one? Okay, well, I believe I was limited to three. So um, if you have any questions, my contact information is on that slide. I've also, for the people here, I've left brochures in the back. Uh, if you'd like to bring one home and call me with questions or like the tour. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And again, congratulations on your pin, and thank you for joining us. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> we have uh, Dave Lucas. Are you on the line? Dave, going once. Are you on the line? I can't hear you. Is that on? He's not on. Well, we have a. Uh, for those of you who don't know Dave, he's been he was joining us the past couple times. I know he has uh, a lot of net lease transactions nationwide. Um, and happy to we'll share these slides, but let's, let's continue on. Mr. Burson, I think I saw Philip on the line. Yeah, hello Francisco. Hello everyone. Uh, great to be here and share this property with you. So this is a. Um, Late industrial building in Ventura County, city of Simi Valley. Um, we've got a motivated seller. We were at five and a half million dollars. We're at five million now. We have had a couple of LOIs a little under that, but she is ready to sell. Um, she's retiring from operating a vitamin manufacturing business out of here. So it's a standalone building, almost a three quarter acre lot. Building size, 14,370 square feet, along with some real nice mezzanine office space of a couple thousand square feet. Um, 
she has it set up for her purposes, dust filtration system, the storage containers, air compressor, closed wastewater, a lot of added value there, as well as 800 amp three-phase power throughout. So it's a fantastic property. Um, one thing that I wanted to share is the difference between doing business in Simi Valley versus the city of Los Angeles, if you're not aware of this, great benefits. Other than getting away from the homeless, you'll see in the background over there, the beautiful mountain range, um, real quality of living, and yet it's 10 minutes from Chatsworth and that end of the San Fernando Valley. But utility tax on electrical use, city of Los Angeles, 12.5%, 0% Simi Valley. Utility tax on natural gas, 10% of total bills, city of LA, 0% Simi Valley. Communications tax on internet and everything related there, 9% LA, 0% Simi Valley. Sales tax rate, 9% city of Los Angeles, 7.5% city of Simi Valley. Minimum wage requirement, there is a minimum wage in LA, no minim minimum wage requirement, Simi Valley. And then business tax, um, $10 million gross receipts, 10,500 city of Los Angeles and a third of that 3,750 in Simi Valley. So a lot of real good benefits of owning and operating a business here. The property will be delivered vacant. Um, she is open to seller finance as well. So you can talk to me about that. And we are offering a two, two percent, two to two and a half percent cooperating fee. So we will compensate on that. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is we're having a broker open this Friday. We'd love to see some support if you guys want to come down and check out the property. Um, it's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, I do have a sponsor. I believe you all know Lee Kleinman uh, is a senior vice president over at a business finance capital. So he's helping to sponsor the event. We'll have a taco truck there. We'll have a raffle. We'll be giving property tours so, you know, doing it upright to get this property sold again, uh, appreciate the opportunity to share this with you and would love to see you out there. Send me a text or email so I know so we can plan accordingly. Thank you. Excellent, Philip. Man, you got everybody's ears perked up when you said tacos. <laughs> tacos. Yes, we got Brasillo coming with a nice tacos, taco stand, taco truck. Food always motivates me, so I guess it might motivate you as well. <laughs> Oh, excellent. So, well, thank you so much for sharing that and sharing that opportunity with us. And we hope to see uh, brokers in our, our both online and in person. And for those of you who are interested, I have, we have, we have one question. What, what kind of business is currently operating? What, what kind of business is currently operating there? Yeah, good question. It's a vitamin manufacturing business. So she will take all of her can, equipment can out. You repeat that? Can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. Yeah, can you hear me? Vitamin manufacturing. So the building would be conducive to any um, medical related because it is all FDA, medical related, food related, cosmetics, um, anything like that. We've we've had a lot of interest from those types of companies as well as machine shops because of the heavy power that's in there. Um, she would. She's not interested in selling the business, but if it's a company that could use the equipment, she's asking $300,000 in above for the equipment to stay there. Otherwise, she'll take out all the proprietary equipment. All of the air compression, air compressor system, closed wastewater, all that will remain. Um, and by the way, there are two overhead doors as well. It could be used for warehouse distribution, manufacturing, et cetera. Got it. Got it. Any other questions or anyone? Okay, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you so Thank much, you. Philip. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Mr. Joe. Hello, this is Rira from Coldwell Banker. So this is a four-unit multifamily home in Koreatown, Los Angeles. Uh, it's a newer construction built in 2016. There are a total of four units, and uh, one of the units will be delivered vacant. So it can be an investment or an owner user property. There are uh, like laundry washer and dryer in each unit and a private garage with a total of nine parking spaces. Projected cap rate is around 5.11% and we are offering 2% broker commission fee. If you guys have any other questions, you can go ahead and email me or text me anytime. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rira. Anybody have any questions or no? Excellent. Well, Mr. Sullivan, is he on the line? There you are. I think you're on mute. Yeah, no, it took a while to get my mute. Hi. Thanks, Francisco. Uh, this is a this is a brand new property. It's almost completely completely about three months. I expect the CFO maybe by the end of August. And it's uh, ten units is on South uh, New Hampshire near Vermont in the 105 freeway, uh, and it's uh, got a great uh, family unit mix, mostly uh, mostly a, a three bedroom, uh, three bath townhomes, and then two bedroom, uh, one bath. Uh, units and one bedroom, one bath units, and it's right now. Uh, the seller wants to has a construction loan coming due. They want to unload it. It's priced a little high, in my opinion, but um, we we want to get this thing uh, 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 sold as uh, uh, you know, prior to CFO. It can be delivered vacant too, so uh, or we can put a contract on it with uh, Section Eight as well uh, with the, with the county. So it's in the unincorporated county. Uh, of LA, so the rent, the as you know, the the Section Eight rents are pretty uh, generous right now. So we can buy it back into a higher cap rate on this deal, uh, and I can you know have, I'm I'm going to revise the OM today. So feel reach uh, you know feel free to reach out, and then on my next meeting I'll have more listings, REO listings to uh, that I just inked uh, we go through. But um, this is one that's uh, there, where there's quite a bit of motivation. Awesome, awesome, awesome. REOs, they're they're coming. No, I already have them. I already have them. So it's just a matter of time. We'll, I'll get more. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate your time. And uh, we have, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, we have our next presenter. Alfredo. Yes, sir. Come on, welcome, welcome. Awesome. So. Um, we have um, a few properties. This is a property in Irwindale. It's a 1.62 acre land parcel. There is a couple of these buildings here. These are like mobile homes. This is kind of a work, work uh, shed area. Um, and when I say they're mobile homes, it's like an office space. And the other ones are for the workers. But it's 1.62. It's fully paved, concrete. It was a rigging company. So they had heavy equipment on there. Um, it's got two entrances right off of it's um, Live Oak and Longden. So you're right on the corner there. This is right near the new developments that are happening in um, Irwindale. So there's it's great. It's a great location um, next to a bunch of truck spaces. So you know outside storage. 5.5 million. We've had this on the market for a little bit, um, probably about three months. We've had a number of offers um, coming in relatively close to our asking. Um, the ownership doesn't want to wait for the, the mini storage um, development deals. They just want to sell it. The trust sale, uh, funny story, not funny, not for the owner. He uh, passed away after we listed it. So then we got into the trust situation and we're work with, working through the, um, the attorneys. That's why it's been on the market for a little bit. We've got good offers. Um, we're looking to get in escrow pretty quick now, now that we're resolving some of the, the issues. But anyways, if you have any interest, please let us know. We'd love to um, show you the space. Let's just go, how do I go to the next one? Uh, uh, DJ will do it for you. Ah, okay. so DJ, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Okay, what's the zoning? Zoning on that is M2. So this is 118 and 122 East Pomona Avenue. These are two metal buildings. Um, we have them listed at a million eight fifty. We're probably going to lower that price coming up. Um, we've, we've had a lot of interest in these in the last um, couple of weeks. Um, there was three properties we had listed, all adjacent. Um, this is the the last one that's not an escrow. It's eight thousand square feet of building on about sixteen thousand square feet of land. Fireside is two point five. Um, the one on the right hand side is a Quonset hut, and you guys know what Quonset huts are. They're you know interesting buildings, all clear span on these buildings. So if you have a client that needs manufacturing space, these have a lot of power. Okay, Jay. Oh, well, tell Jay, uh, DJ or JB to. DJ, can we go to the next slide? slide? Yeah. Thank you. And I'm sorry, those are right next to the um, 
Monrovia Gold Line Station. So it's all very walkable. And thank you, Robert. Robert, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, hold on one Go second. For it. So what we have here is uh, a, a restaurant um, in Smoke Tree Village in Palm Springs. Uh, this is a, a, an asset buy, um, approximately uh, 1,500 square feet, seats about 90 people, indoor, outdoor. Uh, there's a lic uh, license of 47 that comes with the property. Uh, the lease is uh, consumable, five and five. Uh, and a lot of improvements were made. And um, it's in a great location with other, other restaurants. And this, uh, this concept, would uh, does complement the other four or five restaurants that are there. Uh, it's uh, now two ninety five uh, for the asset sale, and it, it is absolutely turnkey. And we're offering two point five percent compensation to uh, selling agent. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. This one is uh, Menton Boulevard. This, I don't know. If this Robert, we had a question. Does uh, have a oh, liquor sorry. license? Yes, it does have a does liquor license. I'm sorry, skip the important part. Yeah, it does have a liquor license, um, and you and and it allows to serve outside as well. So you can serve inside and outside with that uh, with that liquor license. Oh, sorry, he, uh, sorry this Robert, one, I'm sorry to cut you off. That's okay. Yeah, sorry. Hold on, okay, we're having a little bit of interference here. I don't know if we can hear you correctly. Uh, he, she, he said that the uh, make the restaurant business does have a liquor a liquor license. That's what. He yes. Said. Sorry, I apologize. All right, Robert, go ahead. Okay. All right, 1741 Mentone Boulevard. Uh, we initially took this listing as a cafe with a rental unit in the back, and uh, it just was not moving. Uh, what we discovered after a year is that they, people are starting to uh, assemble parcels in this area because this whole area is going through redevelopment. Um, so what we, had, we decided the, uh, to list this as a development site, either as a, a you know, buy now, hold it, or you know, whatever you want to develop it. Uh, it's four parcels totaling, I think, uh, 17,000 square feet. Uh, prime uh, Mentone Boulevard in Mentone on the way to Big Bear. And hold on one second, let me just click this up here. And so we are, it's now listed at 1.1 for development opportunity. Perfect. That's it. Anybody have any questions? No questions. Well, Robert, thank you again for sharing and presenting. And sure, uh, thank you. we're going to appreciate that. For, for everybody who presented today, we thank you for showing, your, sh showing up here today and sharing your listings. And uh, we do want to give a quick moment. If you, anybody can call David um, and Ali, I believe, if they're back there. Um, what, we, what we're endeavoring to do right now is uh, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, for those of you who just came in the door, we actually have Bank of America that comes that, that has their um, they have their economic update internally and what happens is, is that they put these events and these economic you know updates for their clients and they're gracious to give us kind of what their most recent economic update and today obviously this morning we had our CPI numbers and PPI numbers that came out this week so we're we're, we're getting some new news and <clears throat> they'll be coming here shortly but in the meantime uh, for those of you, our next broker forum is going to be Wednesday, June 19th. And can I get a poll real quick? If we were to have it at, at, at the evening at a mixer, would who would who would attend? Evening mixer, anyone? That day? Yeah, one, two. We got uh, online. Do we have any uh, consensus online? Would you guys like to be in person uh, for this uh, over Drew? It, it depends on uh, yeah. where. So I'd depends be on for an evening mixer. Evening. Actually, yes, that sounds awesome. I do agree with Robert. I'm anywhere. Anywhere. Okay. So right now okay, we're sure. gonna have. I would ask. I would ask that you guys send in either, either via email or if you want to put in the chat here, kind of a location where you guys are like. Ah, it'd be awesome if it was here. Pasadena, we have Pasadena. We have a lot of Pasadena folks here. Valley. valley. Oh, we got the Valley. Oh boy. Hey. So we have, uh, uh, you know, Beverly Hills. Anyone? No? Oh man, no West Side. No. Damn. <laughs> it was traffic. 
Venice, contact Venice. So again, we have a lot of locations, guys, that we're we're really looking into. We we need more, we need feedback. We're we're gonna probably put a poll out there, and um, we're gonna wanna uh, get you guys feedback because we want to have again locations where we know people who are joining are gonna show up, and we can invite more people because as you can imagine, we talked about it earlier, summer nights, right? They're coming out. So, and we want to make sure we, we, we change the venue a little bit and see how, how it works. If not, we're always going to keep, we'll, we keep the morning meetings. I know a lot of you like the morning meeting as well. So, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't look like they're going to. Uh, I called. Is it okay? Okay. Maybe pause for a minute. We'll pause for a minute. We'll pause for, we'll pause for a minute. Well, let me give you guys more updates. Let's see if we can go to the next uh, slide real quick for uh, upcoming education. So for those of you who don't know about the Cor Corporate Transparency Act, does that, has everybody heard of it? Yes? For those of you, uh, this is actually, uh, Alfredo and I are on the Fiduciary Committee, right? We're on the committee. Yes, come on. So yeah. we're on the Fiduciary Committee, and we're actually putting together a corporate... Go ahead. In yeah, I missed somebody. Robert Stock. Robert Stock. Oh, so, oh, come on in. Come on front. Come up front, if you like. We have a representative from uh, Bank of America. And if you, yeah, Merrill Lynch, Merrill Lynch, excuse me, Merrill Lynch. Hey guys. Welcome, welcome. If you can come up here and speak on the screen and yeah, no, no problem. Take the floor. Hey guys, this is kind of like off the cuff here because I, I was uh, just uh, introduced um, about two minutes ago to give a really brief update. Um, I'm not really sure who I'm addressing. I just was told it was commercial real estate brokers. Are you guys all from local markets? Yes. Los Angeles. Okay. Los Angeles. I would say Southern California. Southern California. Okay. And which um, uh, companies are we talking about? Like the major ones? Like we have everybody here. We got KW Commercial, commercial yeah. Whole Bank of Commercial. We have Lean Associates. Uh, we have Kidder Matthews. We have uh, Roar Commercial. We have C CIBA. Uh, we have various different groups from different brokerages. And online, we have people from Compass Commercial. I mean, all the broker shops. So they're all here. Okay. And, and then we are CCIMs, which are the top brokers in, in the Well, that's, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm uh, uh, my pleasure to be speaking to you guys today, just for a quick market update, um, and also maybe an idea that you guys could use personally. Um, so just uh, our, our thought process on, on real estate markets is, is uh, obviously it's a challenge right now in commercial space. I'm not an expert in that area. Um, I can tell you from an interest rate standpoint, we think that interest will most likely start declining next year. Um, I, we think the Fed is probably going to be starting to reduce rates as early as September, but most likely towards the back end of the year to the beginning of next year. Um, I think that, that will help with the overall real estate uh, market, because ultimately if you get a declining market, that would actually help propel uh, some of the real estate asset prices. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can give us a little bit about the last time when we spoke with one of your other colleagues, they mentioned a little bit about what's happening with the, with the, the business consumers. They shared that there's a lot of green incentives happening uh, for different uh, businesses that are propelling more growth. And in essence, everybody thought that there would be a declining economy, but there's still a lot of stimulus that's still being injected into the economy right now. Yeah, no, I mean, so if you're talking about the equity markets um, outside of real estate, we actually think there's a lot more tailwinds that are going to, going to help the economy and help the markets uh, propel forward, more so than those that are going to detract, detract away. Um, we're, we actually are bullish on the markets, even though we, are, we actually do see the equity markets having some volatility re recently in the first quarter of this year and actually to the you now second quarter. Um, but we do think there are more tailwinds that will help the, the economy and help the markets do well. So we're positioned bullishly. Um, it, it, in many different in many different parts of the market so we like growth we like value um, we like the idea of the magnificent seven we think there's a lot of reasons why people still should be invested there but we also like investing in other parts of the market we call them the, the other 493 uh, of the sp 500 there's seven companies that are that make up the the majority of where the returns have come over the last several years um, and we haven't really seen the breadth of returns from the other companies and so uh, we're starting to see the green shoots there um, from the companies that are outside of those magnificent seven companies. So that's going to be a, a tailwind if you want to think about that, if we're getting broader growth from other areas. We started to ex uh, experience um, more growth in the value names within the S&P 500 um, versus just growth. So 
you think about growth companies being like the Microsoft, the Apples, Googles, um, uh, these types of names, uh, we're starting to see a broadening of returns coming from value names like uh, your healthcare sector, your uh, financial sector, which we think actually is, is very well uh, underappreciated right now. Um, so again, those couple areas are, are where we're starting to put more monies into, and uh, we think that there's uh, value there. Can you share more about the credit markets uh, for business and financing in general? I'm not an expert in that space. Oh, okay. No, I'm, uh, so I'm, I'm a financial advisor at Merrill. Um, I have a team of five people that help um, affluent families, and ultimately we manage about $600 million of assets. So our expertise is in financial planning, wealth management, um, tax planning strategies, uh, not so much in, in identifying credit. We do have people on our team that actually do focus on that, and if that was something we wanted to express, then I can absolutely bring them to you guys uh, for some in-depth uh, discussions. So. Oh, sir, your name one more time. I'm Bobby Champong, and um, I've been in Merrill for 24 years. Uh, if you guys have any questions on things, actually, I have a few cards that I want to sh share with you. One thing I will mention that is actually very specific to pretty much every commercial real estate broker I think that's out there is if you haven't already set up a cash balance plan for yourself, you may want to consider it. I've set up many of them for our clients, and you can save much more in terms of tax dollars than you can in, in a step or an IRA. An IRA, right? You can contribute probably more than $150,000 pre-tax per year. Um, so if you want to have any questions about that, let me know. What Happy is the name of that vehicle? Uh, it's Cash Balance Pension Plan. Cash Balance. I'm sorry, Cash Balance Pension Plan. It's, it's also called a defined benefit plan. It's also called defined benefit plans, uh, defined benefit cash balance plans. And um, they can be coupled with a 401k uh, profit sharing plan as well. You, you they need can, to be uh, administered through by a QPA. But let me let me just I, I have one, and I don't pay taxes because of it. I just I, I'm already 63, and I put in like half a million plus every year into it. So yeah. the older you this are, the better. Pretty so again, I'm not sure again the, the dynamic of this call and who's yeah, on sorry, it. So. It's on a Zoom. Sorry, you're on a Zoom and in person. Excuse okay. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No worries. <laughs> not a problem. Uh, but yeah, no. So it is based on your age um, and your income. So if you are interested in hearing about it, the older you are, the best, the better it is for you. But I can tell you, single person plans, like most of the people in this room and probably on this call, it's extremely beneficial. If you're 1099 versus W-2, you can put away hundreds of thousands of year and uh, extrapolate that and, and, and multiply that through multiple years. It could become millions in a very short minute, short amount of time. Well, something that's called the cash balance or defined contribution plan? It's not a defined contribution. It's a defined benefit. Defined, defined. defined benefit cash balance plan. Yeah. And uh, if you have any questions on that, feel free to reach out. I'll leave a few of my cards on the counter and then... So Reach out if you need any questions. Have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. All Appreciate right. your time. Thank you. Yes, we do a little bit of off the cuff uh, financial, you know, education for our for our community and for our members online. Thank you guys for joining us. And uh, last but not least, we have our CI 102 class coming up uh, in July 22nd and 25th. For those of you who want to get an in-depth market analysis education, understanding how CCIMs really pierce through the veil of what market analysis we should be looking into, especially in this market. Um, it's also going to be part of your core classes towards your designation and on the path to your PIN. So this is a great opportunity. So other than that, I think that's uh, all the announcements we have. Um, and thank you again to our sponsors, and thank you for everybody to come. All right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, sir. What do you guys do put on uh, the um, to do business plan? So that's, a, I mean, we, we don't manage the site to do business class. That's actually by the Institute. We could make a request to the Institute for that. I mean. 102, that's the. Oh, yeah. I really want to know something about, but they couldn't go in any depth. Really they do have ward classes for site to do business, but I mean, I could definitely, we can reach out, DJ, if we can put that on there uh, to request a chapter or a specific uh, site to do business, you know, demo and, and overview. Because what happens is, is that they do it at ICSC. 
And for those of you going to ICSC, I think it's next week or next word or whatever. But they have actually, so that's where they have that. That's that's their model, their their claim to fame at ICSC. They give you the whole breakdown there. But they can have that. Um, we might be able to have that as a webinar here. So we can definitely look into that. For those of you, awesome. yeah, site to do business. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is in a site that has um, a GIS service called ArcGIS. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with that tool. We can definitely put a webinar together. Uh, it's fundamentally a great, uh, we have a partnership with Esri. Esri is a great data source that gives you demographics, traffic counts. I mean, you're talking about tapestry reports that gives you, I would say, uh, pretty scary knowledge about certain neighborhoods. <laughs> so it gives you more color as to what exactly is happening in a particular area, demographic, and also to the age and how, where growing families are and where jobs are at. So it's a great, it's a great tool. Um, I definitely use it. And uh, we can definitely have that. Thank you. Well, so much. You know, it's just a rabbit hole. Oh yeah, it's definitely a rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely you're, you're talking about over 100, 100, 200 plus reports yeah. that you can get off that one source. So it's it's incredible. So thank you again for all our sponsors. Thank you for everybody who's joining us. We'll see you again at the next uh, broker forum. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna leave here. All right. Thank you, guys.